Test, test.
mute myself. All right, guys, welcome to our first live for the live build sessions. Um, this is something new, and I'm live streaming to YouTube and Facebook. So if you guys can hear me, let me know. I just need me a thumbs up or a like on our videos to give me an idea of if anyone is actually watching or can hear me. So it's the first time we've been able to pop it up on both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I'm hoping that that is good. I'm going to give it a minute. Everyone is coming in fine between the both of them. I know my internet sucks. So if this is the first time you guys have ever been on with us, you know that my internet is the worst. So we're going to give everyone a minute to get on the, on the live stream here as I gather the last couple things. And I'm losing my mind already. I just had something in my hand, now I can't find it. All right, what the heck? Brett's losing his mind. All right, here we go. See me on the live stream. All right, we're back, we're back. All four pixels look good, Ron, thanks. It'll come in and out as good as it can. I'm stuck with what I'm stuck with. Worst case scenario, uh, we just we just light my uh, light my modem on fire tonight. All right, so we're gonna do an unboxing really of the kit first. I'm gonna start just going through the whole kit, do the inventory. My dad will not be doing this next week. He'll be doing his own uh, next steps. So today we're just gonna be doing wall preps, getting everything ready, enjoying our time, because uh, it's been a while since we've. Um, been able to do one of these together and I'm excited. All right, so opening the kit, we have some laser cut basswood. We've got some brick. Those look like they're chimney pieces, some trim, some wall sections. I'm guessing that's what we're gonna be applying our stucco to. I got a new camera, everything's new. Uh, we got sticker material, it looks as, and then some uh, it looks like some other small roofing instructions. So very well written instructions. If you guys uh, are familiar with Ron Kleiss's mind mount model, it goes over the top with his instructions in a good way. And they are all um, done very well. So I have no doubt that these will be done just as well. Plenty of signs. And we talked with Ron about that on the podcast. Um, some great signs. I mean, that was a template sheet. I'm sorry. Here's the instructions. And as you can tell, the instructions are very, and they're very um, well done. Tons of photographs to keep you on track and show you exactly what you need to be doing. By the way, thanks for joining us tonight. This is the first night of the live builds, and this is the first time we've ever live streamed on um, live on Facebook and. YouTube at the same time so I promise if there's issues tonight I'm gonna to do my best to resolve them so here's all the instructions we're gonna we're gonna to get to these a little bit later I'm gonna continue just going through the kit I know guys my video quality is what it is because of my internet situation here it's pretty awful so I work with me here so dump out our details bag we got some the good old acetate gotta have some acetate uh, your titchy windows, some titchy doors, pretty standard. And we got some laser cut parts. I want to get to those next. Um, a piece of aluminum. It looks like aluminum piping for some sort of a. I don't know what that's going to be for. I guess we'll find. Oh, that's for the chimneys. I think that's for the chimneys. Some wire. We're just doing a quick inventory before we dig into the kit. Some cast iron part or cast white metal parts. Looks like a hand truck, a little dolly. Everyone, if you guys are watching on the Facebook page and it's 
uh, sketchy on Facebook, head on over to the YouTube channel, uh, HO Scale Customs on YouTube, and everyone's saying that the quality is a little better over there. So we'll do our best tonight. You guys have requested for a long time that we do YouTube streaming, so I'm trying it out for the first time tonight. All right, and here is a laser cut piece that has, um, you know, the, the Wiley sign details, the lamp sections, and that's going to be, according to Ron on our podcast, that, that little section is going to be a, a bugger. But we're going to do it together. There's a wall piece. Your bracing. This kit really comes with a lot. All of your chipboard pieces cut. Lots of detail. Clapboard siding. Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a clapboard siding. Some scraps. And then your awesome fish scale looking rounded shingles. So, guys, you're going to have to deal with my camera quality tonight. I'm, I'm apologizing ahead of time. I'm not going to apologize much more because it's bad. I know it's bad. It'll be less blurry um, when my dad's on, I promise. So let's get started on the kit. I'm going to put all these parts back. And we're going to leave out the template for bracing and the entry into these walls. So let's get started here. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Karen. My awful internet connection. Hopefully it's great for you guys. All right. Sorry, I was just checking some audio. All right, so let's get this all started. Um, some of these things are optional, as Ron and they point out in the instructions at my mount models. But a hobby knife with a number 11 blade is a necessity. A fine file. Uh, I use some sandpaper, some fine grit sandpaper. And um, a square ruler is definitely needed. Where's my ruler at? I think I've lost my ruler. Oh, here we go. All right. So let's get started with just some bracing. So he's telling us to inspect all the sheets, um, make sure nothing, nothing's damaged or missing. So we're good. So we're just going to actually cut these sheets out of the wood here. Oops. There we go. I'm cutting them out from the back side so I don't mess up anything on the front. They just slipped there. So we're going to just cut these out. A lot of tonight's stuff is going to be um, a review or most of you guys already know how to do this. So it's going to be you guys just joining in and building with me. And it's great to just see you guys again or build with you guys again. We haven't done a, a live build in quite some time. Oh, buddy, Shory, first build, very excited to get started. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys are going to have to deal with my really crappy internet for just for the night. Um, I'll try and make it work better next time. It is my, it is the best I can do right now. All four pixels of it. But, like I said, we'll get through it. We'll persevere. I didn't, I didn't uh, pay the, uh, the, what's it, the horse, it's like a, what are they, donkeys or mules that run those old stone mills? Mine's like that, but it's an internet mill, and the donkey, or the mule, just walks in circles, eating the grain in the circle. But I didn't give them enough grain to get my internet pumping fast enough today, in my internet mill. See, a lot of you have modems, I have an old internet mill, like in the stone age, not stone age, whatever you call it. Medieval times. Yeah, if you guys have questions, uh, I have both of them up. Um, both Facebook and YouTube up so I can moderate questions. And Ron Kleiss is also in here. He can moderate questions about the kit. And uh, my dad's also in here, probably interacting as the page. So all three of us can be in here moderating comments um, for the night. So if you have comments, throw them at us. Unless you're making fun of my internet, which we all know is crap. So... I see a comment from Buddy Shorey. 
This is a little hobby knife called a slice. Um, picked that up on Amazon. It was about, I think it was like seven or eight bucks. Blades perfectly. And then you can put your finger through it like this and have a nice control with it when you're cutting. Sometimes I end up holding it like this because I'm lazy. But yeah, you can put your finger through it and it has a nice um, support for cutting. And you're not holding it like this, like you would with another X-Acto knife like that, like a pencil, where it starts to hurt this finger quite a bit. And I'm not flicking you off, I'm just showing you that it hurts your middle finger a little bit. So this one kind of allows me to press down a little more and not put as much pressure on my middle finger. I love it. Slice on Amazon, that's what it's called. So we've removed all the parts. We are supposed to read the instructions beforehand. We're not doing that because who needs instructions? Just kidding, Ron. All right, remove parts one, two, and three from the clapboard, wood sprue, clean up and file the edges. I removed them all. Yeah, Dan, uh, I don't know if it's comfortable for, le for lefties. It didn't say left-handed or right-handed, but like it works good in my left hand and I'm not left-handed. It fits comfortably in my right hand. If I was left-handed, I mean, it feels the same. So I'm guessing it's for, you know, either hand. All right, so these are walls one, two, and three, these big ones. And we're going to clean them up first. I don't have a file, but what I do is I lay my sandpaper flat on my work surface and give them a quick back and forth just to get rid of that, that edge. I'm probably shaking the hell out of my camera too. Just cleaning up those edges really lightly. You don't want to sand off too much. And if you cut it well with a good blade, which yes, guys, I did replace my blades. I know everyone makes fun of me because I don't replace my blades. Hey, Jason. Yeah, I, I barely read my instructions. Man, the quality on the Facebook video is absolute garbage. All right. All right, all three of these are sanded, as the instructions said. Brace the back sides using the one by one eighth by one eighth strip wood. So that is this guy. I'm gonna get two of them out. All right, so our bracing template here shows us where to brace them. So we're gonna flip them over. I'm glad we have some first timers in here. That's awesome. Yeah, Dan Banks is making fun of the quality of our Facebook live stream. It's because we got banned a couple, well, we got a couple people in there that got some slaps on the wrist for using the words H-O, like ho, and then the words like uh, A space K or A space M space M space O. So I think that's why they're, they're removing the quality of my stream because of you guys, you're all out of Facebook jail. I'm on like stream probation. Just probably saying that's going to get my stream banned now. Our page has already been worn twice this week. Uh, Alright, so that is cut. I'm going to do the same thing with this wall. I don't measure exact. Save these scraps for this smaller piece here. Need one on either side of this window. So what's going to happen with this live build is I'm going to do this bracing tonight. I'm going to be on for about an hour tonight, and then um, my dad will work ahead and get to this point where we end tonight, and then he'll come on and uh, jump on the next steps. So we'll kind of flip-flop each other as we go. 
Um, we're going to go ahead. I think he's telling us to glue. Uh, brace the backside reference sheets. Be mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So we're going to glue these on. I just use a post-it note here, as you can see, with a toothpick. And I get a little bit of glue on here. You don't need a lot. You can be. You don't need to douse it in glue. And just line it up where the template tells you to. Like that. And then up. Oh, we're flicking our wood here. Get these two going. And then I use the good old hockey pucks as weights until the glue is dry. I'm going to push this off camera. All right, if you guys are just joining us on the Facebook live stream, uh, apparently there's some quality issues with the um, quality of the stream, like pixelated, So, and the YouTube stream is apparently a little better. So go find us. If you want to watch a little higher quality stream, head on over to our YouTube channel and um, catch it over there. I think it's still called HO Scale Customs on YouTube, but um, you'll find it. If you're subscribed to us, it should pop up. All right. Oh, shoot. Okay. I know this part is pretty, um, you know, step one for a lot of guys, but uh, we have some new people in. If you're doing a craftsman kit for the first time right now, and it's this build, comment in our YouTube Facebook page, or on the video, I mean, comment, and then let us know if this is the first time you're building a craftsman kit with us. Either with us or a craftsman kit at all. Yeah, Mike, that Mike commented on Facebook that that slice knife, uh, he just ordered it. I love mine. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to get a bunch of new blades. You can just use the existing Zacto blade you have. Dan, the, the glue, um, probably, I would say, I might say overnight, officially, if you want to be official with it, the letting the glue dry overnight is probably the best bet. Um, uh, usually within an hour or so, it's like good enough. You'll know once you start messing around with it uh, <laughs> really quick, it'll... Usually once it's within the hour, you're, you're, you're pretty good within the hour. As long as you're not doing uh, in a, a massive amount of glue, if you're a little bit more conservative with the glue, it'll, uh, it'll dry a little quicker. It's just like paint. You know, if you slap too much paint on, it's going to take forever to dry. All right, so we did walls one, two, and three. We're done with step three of the instructions. I'm actually going to get a marker or a pen. And for the first time ever... Go through these step by step. Add the 116th bracing, bracing to the back along one of the side parts, five and six. What's five and six? Five and six. One, one, six, one sixteenth by one eighth. And we're, and we're letting it hang over the edge. I need a better place for these instructions. There we go. All right, walls five and six are over here. We're gonna cut these ones out.
how did everyone uh, enjoy this week's episode with Jeff Grove? Go ahead and just cut this wall out too, because I'm probably just gonna do the bracing all in one shot. One, two, three. All right, there's two other walls. Are oh, they over there? Okay. All right. So these are walls five and six, and one sixteenth by one eighth. So this one, one sixteenth by one eighth board. And you can tell here these walls. So about halfway across the board, it's going to overlap the edges. And it's not quite the entire way up the wall. So it's about right there. You're going to cut it there. And there. So one, two. I'm going to need two more for later, so I'm going to just set that aside. And it also looks like I need some 1 8 bracing on that same wall, on those same ones. And it goes up to the top of the windows on the inside edge. So right there. If you need a chopping tool, I think Scott Perry, are you still working on that one? Is that still available? Let us know in the comments. All right. So this is the 1 16th by 1 8th. And we're going to do a slight overlap, right? So just a little bit. That's a little too much glue. But just a little bit of glue. <clears throat> Goes here. Overlap it a little. Use this piece of scrap wood to get some extra glue off that corner. There. Same with this other wall. A little bit of glue, not much at all. Just for this edge. Flip it over and only put it on about half. We're overlapping it, so it's going to hang over the edge. So about half the board is exposed there. Damn, this focus is awful. All right. I don't think it's a focus. I mean the video quality. I apologize, guys. I will make sure that next week's video quality is 100 times better. This one is on a quarter post, so... According to the instructions, attaching it flush to the edge. So you're one eighth by one eighth, attaching it flush to the edge. I always wipe the excess glue off with my finger. That way you don't get that like uneven edge sticking out. You don't want that glue, just that little bit of glue hanging out over the edge is enough sometimes to kind of make the walls not meet up. So I always take my finger down to the edge, clean up that extra glue. like this squish it down like that right and then you take your finger just wipe off that glue and then you have a tasty treat you can lick the glue off later I'm kidding don't lick the glue off do not do that terrible joke I do not advise ever eating the glue and we'll weigh it down with a sculpey puck Yeah, Dad. Next week for the um, next week for the uh, live build, we're going to um, hook you up to do live stream on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So we'll have to join. My dad and I will have to get on about twenty minutes early, Dad, and I'll set you up for it. 
It's a piece of cake, though. Don't worry. All right. So we got step four. I think all done. They helped for... Yes, step four is all done. I'm going to cross that off. After the bracing dries, it's a good time to paint or stain the clapboard walls. Be sure to paint the back of the walls with black to help minimize warping. Also, dark inside of a building helps to fake the interior, help hide the fake interior. So that's something you guys can do. I'm not going to do it tonight because just for sake of time, um, I don't want to wait for this black spray paint to dry. But you can paint the insides of your walls black. Uh, to prevent the light from showing through and then looking all funky because, you know, you can see the inside of the building. Lots of guys do it. I've done it as well, but um, I don't have the time to do that tonight on this live build. It'd be like watching paint dry. Haha, <laughs> get it? Just kidding. That would subscribe from us now if you're not into those stupid jokes. Um, but... Uh, but anyways, I was reading a comment. If, you guys, if you're just joining us now, I know I've said it like three other times, quality on the YouTube channel is 10 times better than the video quality on the Facebook page. So head on over to YouTube if you want to see it in a little clearer quality. Everyone over there is saying it's a little bit, little bit uh, clearer of a video. All right. So these are all done. These are dry enough to paint. This one I just glued, so we're going to let that set for a little bit. And now the paint comes. So we're going to be doing this one to pretty much the same uh, look as the the kit on the box because that's the way we're going to build this one. Uh, a lot of boards on this because sometimes a couple boards, but I'm not going to do a lot of them because it's um, dilapidated, but it can have a little bit of age. So uh, to, pop, to pop boards best with a sharp blade. So actually, I'm going to get a new blade on my knife real quick. works better with a newer knife blade child proof packages there we go all right so let me swap all right oh you guys had to watch it boringness okay here we go Pop a board up. All I do is see which piece of the board I want. I make a small vertical slit against the siding. Just take your knife and you gently, gently, gently cut along the siding. Not don't you do not put a lot of pressure on it at all. And you just just like that. And then when you get to a point, you'll be able to just kind of start popping it up you might as well we pop the board so you'll see if i show it close enough up that little piece of siding there is is, is popped up a little bit i'm not gonna do a lot of them on this build like i said i don't want it to look too disheveled of a building but i'll do two or three of them here so i'm gonna make a couple little relief cuts like that and then just really gently pop it out it's better to make a bunch of tiny little slices to get it rather than forcing it and doing one big cut because that's when you're going to slip and you're going to you know really bitch up the wall and you don't want that all right next one let's do one on this one right down here and we'll do it facing the opposite direction. That's the other thing. You don't want all of your siding to be warping in the wrong, in the same direction, because that's going to look really unnatural. Okay. That one got a little chipped up, but that's all right. It looks like a piece of, got chunked out of there. Let's do one more over here. Again, very carefully, we're just going to lift this board one little slice at a time.
I'm just checking some comments. We're good. Focus. Oh boy, there's a wire hanging everywhere. Oh, we're a mess. Come on, focus. All right, looks like we're focused a little better for now, for a couple minutes. Boy, I'm sorry, guys. It's like we haven't done a live stream ever before. All right, we got our walls popped. I'm going to try and work on the uh, focusing issue a little bit. I'm not going to do too much um, weathering like that. It's just not... Not something I wanted to look too busted up. Let's do one more. Why not? As I talk, I'm doing more and more. This time I'm gonna use a flatter knife. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make a long cut like this. And I'm not gonna make a vertical cut. What I'm gonna do is wedge this flat bleed. I don't know what number this one is. It's, I don't know, number something. I'm gonna wedge it underneath the siding and just do that and pry it up. So now it's like a long, um, like the board's popping, but it didn't split, you know? The siding's just starting to warp a little. And I might do that on one or two other spots, just to kind of even it out a little bit. Make sure you keep your fingers away from the front end, so when you're pushing, you're not pushing into your fingers. So you do it like this. Keep your fingers clear of the blade in case you slip and you go that way. You're not, you know, you're not turning your fingers into a slap chop where you're chopping up a bunch of tomatoes. You ever seen that thing, that commercial for the slap chop? They put the tomatoes in the thing and they hit the top and yeah, whatever. It's the first thing that came to my mind. All right. There we go. That's enough board lifting for that one today. Wow, the focus. Oh, William, the stucco is going on different parts. So if you look, William's asking, won't the stucco cover these pops on YouTube? Yeah, the this part of the building here, if you look closely, doesn't have um, stucco on it. You see that? Like right in here, there's no stucco. The stucco is on the front part right there. So that part is where your board pops will show. Actually, you can kind of see a small board pop right at my fingertip. So yeah, the, the back side is all siding. Um, so that'll be focus, you. Focus. All right, give me a second. I'm figuring this out one step at a time. Come on. All right, we'll get through this together, guys, I promise. Um, the stucco is going on these pieces, which are not, uh, which are just your plain basswood without the scribe siding. Okay, I'm going to have to work on this webcam. I'm not using my cell phone tonight. I'm actually using a webcam. So um, it keeps autofocusing, and it's a pain in my ass. So I'll fix that before next week, or before I, next time I'm on too. All right, the last two pieces here I think we need to do are, um, well, it doesn't really tell me on here yet. I shouldn't work ahead, right, Ron? I shouldn't work ahead, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, these two pieces are, what's this for? I'm gonna work ahead. Yeah, they go vertical. All right. So real quick, before I go much farther, I'm going to just do the bracing on these two guys um, just a step or two ahead because I don't want to forget about them and then not do it later. And while I'm at this stage, I'm already just going to do it. So these are pieces. Um, these are pieces number 22 and 22. Focus. Focus. There we go. I just got to put a piece of paper in front of it for a second. All right. This is the highest quality live stream you guys will ever watch. I promise. 
Oh, there it goes again. Well, if you just squint, it'll look clear. Pain in my ass. Okay, so right now I'm working on these two pieces right here. I'm just going to keep the paper there so it stays on that. Maybe. We can only hope. Yeah. Leave it to me to try new equipment the night before or the night of, right? Never go with new equipment the day you try something new. Because that's when it's going to break, like tonight. Or not break, but not work the way you want it. It's all good. Hey, if you guys are just joining us on Facebook, uh, the quality of the stream on that side apparently sucks. So head on over to our YouTube channel, Wiley Scale Modeling on YouTube. It still has the old HO Scale Customs logo, so don't be thrown off by that. Um, everyone is saying that the quality of the stream over there is much better. Next week, my dad will be doing his live stream um, from his side of the world, which is only like 40 miles away. But uh, he will also be on Facebook and YouTube. So this whole series will be streamed live on YouTube and Facebook for everyone to enjoy. So if you aren't on Facebook, now your prayers have been answered because we're finally on YouTube doing live streams. And there goes the focus again. We're squinting and flicking our wood. Yep. All right. We're going to just do this last. Oh, wait, that doesn't get that. That gets a corner trim. So we're not going to do that. Follow the instructions, Brett. All right. Um, it just gets the trim. I'm going to set that aside. Put a puck on that. And it looks like this piece here also gets some trim. But it's inside more. So... It lays, according to this diagram, it lays to the inside of this big opening, which looks like it's probably the storefront. Yeah, that's the front of the restaurant. So it lays to the inside of the front of that restaurant. So we're just going to measure it up to about the top of the window, right about there. Chop it here. Man, this camera pissing me off. What if I go up a little higher with it? Or come down lower with it? We're going to find it. We're going to figure it out right now. I'm just going to stay right there for now. All right. Bracing that piece is a little piece of scrap. Save all these little scraps, guys. These little pieces you cut off of the end of your, um, your, your trims and corner pieces, save all that because that all comes in handy later. You never know when you're going to need these little, um, these little scraps. They all come in handy. I have a bin. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, right here. This thing is awesome. This is like my little treasure bin. I have a couple of these. I got these dollar store um, pencil containers. I got a whole stack of them over on my layout. I mean, on my um, my shelf. I keep these little dollar store um, pencil containers around. I got them at Dollar General, cheap as dirt dollar. And uh, I put all my scraps in them. So like when I'm done cutting all my pieces up, just toss them in there, and then uh, you know when you never you never know when you're gonna need them again, or need a little piece. You don't want to cut up a whole sec section. You just go into your little scrap bin. So yeah, go to the Dollar General. These pencil cases are awesome. I have some for detail parts. I have some for like you know you put this kind of stuff in it, like your scrap, um, your scrap pieces that you cut from board and batten and clapboard siding i throw one i have one that's just full of that stuff you got to have a little bit of a scrap goodie pile for yourself um 
You can set it to normal focus, Greg, but I can't do it midstream. So I'm going to have to play with the settings of this thing going into next week when I'm live in two weeks. Um, I can play with the settings of it, but I'd have to end the stream. And uh, I don't want to miss you guys. I think I got a good one right here. I think I found the good distance for it, like a good focal length. So we're going to leave it right where it's at and not move it at all now. It seems like it's like doing a lot better for this last couple seconds. I moved it a hair closer and uh, it looks like it's doing a lot better. It seems like it's doing better, I hope. Yeah, I think it looks a little better. All right. No, don't do that. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not ending the stream. But I'll be up. In two weeks, I'll make sure I have this thing ready to roll. I'm happy with where it's at right now, though. I think the problem was the depth. I hatched it a little higher than where it is right now. And I think it was having a hard time, like, with the depth of everything. Because I was holding things up close to it, and then I was dropping it down. And uh, on such a large area, it's like a much more concentrated area all right real quick note um in the instructions he tells you to keep the corner bracing away from the edges on this because for one reason when you go to throw it together you're going to have this matching up with other walls with corner bracing and you don't want these corner bracings so close to each other where when you um let me find a good example like this one here we go when you have these walls meeting up together you don't want them to be so Focus again. Oh boy. Anyways, you don't want them to be so close to the corner that you, um, we're going back to the cell phone next week, everyone, guys. This, this never happened with the cell phone. There we go. Um, when you match these corners up, you want it to be like this. You don't want them to be, uh, you don't want it this corner this piece of bracing to push this out so that way you have a problem and there's a big gap so when you have it like this you have enough room just enough room to put your corner trim in right there so make sure you're just paying attention to where you're putting the bracing and the corner bracing because it'll make a big difference later and you won't have to tear the whole thing apart and be frustrated because uh you just got everything done everything's painted and then now you got to tear some bracing off because it's not matching up in the corners right and i know you've all probably done that if you've ever done that you'll feel my pain when you got the whole kit put together and you come around and you're getting ready to assemble it and then you put it together and then your corner trim is pushing itself out like this and you're like oh my god it's not even matching up so you don't want to do that all right bracing's dried good to go now we're going to start um, staining and painting. So what I like to do, and then my dad might not do this the same way. So this is where it's going to be fun to pay attention to what we each do. Because we are going to build the kits pretty much the same. But um, we're going to follow a couple different rules for ourselves. Or not rules, but a couple different styles of, of Matt Probst did that. He said he had to hit the beer fridge. Yeah, I mean that's a frustrating moment when you're building something. My God, I gotta tear this whole thing apart again because I goofed and now my corner trim's not matching up right. Nothing's matching up right, and it's just it's just ugly. One thing I would suggest you guys looking into is different types of stains. Uh, this one is from a company called Hunterline. If you guys are familiar with it, you can just ignore what I'm about to say. Or just go check out all the stuff they have. And if you're newer, um, you can just use India Ink Wash. I mean, I'm sorry, India Ink, like this, ink, and um, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, make your own washes. But there's a lot of great companies out there making um, uh, weathering mixes and, 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 and stains. So you should go check them out. There's a lot of different colors. But for today's purposes, I'm just going to use my own homemade ink wash. We're going to just 
open her up. It is a nasty, crusty ass little jar. It's ugly. It's an ugly jar. And I'm gonna use my ugly brush that goes with it. This brush is my stain brush. It's the only brush I use for stain. And uh, I'm just gonna check the. I'm gonna check using Ron's uh, instructions. Yeah, I'm cool with that color. Uh, the darkness of it, and I'm just gonna quickly stain the walls with a base coat of my India ink wash. Just like that. I'm not gonna like, I don't wanna over soak it. I don't wanna put too much on, but I just want that that dark color to be in the background of this wall. Because I'm gonna do a technique next that everyone that is following us is all too familiar with that I love and it's called sponge painting. Actually, you know what, should I try? I'm gonna try something new tonight. Why not? I'm gonna try something new. You don't have to do this. Please don't do this if you're not comfortable with it. You can, I'm, actually I'm gonna show you one wall first with the sponge paint. Um, you can use a paintbrush and paint it on too, but the sponge, I think, gives a really cool texture. I'm gonna do one wall with a sponge, uh, and then I'm gonna do one wall with um, something new. It was talked about on our show a couple weeks ago by one of our guests. Ron says, not the sponge, ah! Yeah, we're gonna try something else though. Let me find something I can do it with. Oh, I know where it is. Give me one second, I gotta get a piece of paper. One second. I have a piece of, I have some newsprint laying around somewhere. I think it might be right here. Nope. Shoot. My dad and I were down here cleaning. Now I can't find my newsprint. Had a whole ream of newsprint. We might have thrown it out. I think we threw it out, Dad. We're going to try something different. We're going to experiment tonight. Release the sponge. I love it. What ratio ink to alcohol was asked on Facebook by Mike Becker. Mike, um, <laughs> I wish I could tell you. Uh, it's a dark ratio. That's all I know. I honestly, I couldn't tell you what I do um, with my ink wash ratio. I just kind of, I have a light and a dark. That's what I do. I make a light version and I make a dark version. So I kind of, I kind of just wing it. Uh, I know some guys out there are particular with how they measure it. I'm not particular with it. I just make a light and a dark version. I think it just comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you want your stain to look like. So this, I know what my dark version is. It's like, this is my ratio, you ready? I put about 15 to 20 drops in here and then I put some alcohol in and test it. And then I go from there. I might add a drop or two and then, it's really unscientific, I promise. Not a standard ratio. All right, so. We're gonna first do a sponge. Let me get my palette. And we're gonna use, for this wall, I'm gonna use this warm, it's called vintage white. I'm gonna use that for my walls. Uh, just for the, the base wall. I know there's a red trim, it looks like. Yeah, it's got, oh, it's got white. Actually, you know what? What's a corner trim color? Looks like it's all white. So, you know what I'm gonna do? Before we paint, because I'm gonna do this like the photo, uh, the corner trim is also on the picture, the same color. And I usually do, so I'm gonna get out of my comfort zone here. I normally do the corner trim the same color, at, I mean a different color, and I do it like the color of the windows or whatever. 
but I'm going to actually do the corner trim the color of the uh, walls. So while we're at it, we're going to just do some corner trim. And it's actually going to save me some time because now I don't need to worry about um, I don't need to worry about my corner trim painting it separately. So I'm just going to, woo, wasn't tightened up there. I'm just going to do my corner trim right now. Guys, give me a second and I'll pop it on. One really cool trick is always start with the square end down and then your your opposite your op once you cut your corner trim to meet your roof line, the opposite side once you flip it over, you can just match it up again and boom, done. I don't know, it saves a little bit of lumber. I used to like not think about it that way, and then you have all this wasted might only be an eighth of an inch, but you waste it each time. So or not really wasting it because that piece is a waste anyways, but you uh, you have to like double cut. All right, last piece of corner trim. I think that's it. Oh, no, nope, there's two more. All right, these two pieces are done. I'm gonna get these walls here. There we go. Just gonna do these buggers real quick, cut that square. Yeah, a mega, my dad said on Facebook, a mega dark stain is, is actually good to have. I have one like that. Uh, I lied. It's, I don't use it often, which is why I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, there's one stain that I have that's like almost black. It's almost just like dipping ink wash on your, uh, on your work. But occasionally that comes in handy. You never know. Antique white. Oh, Ron's saying that most on YouTube, Ron's saying most of the regular white and suede washes. So, yeah, I'm going to start with vintage white. And then um, I might do a little bit of variation in white. It was something we talked where the number of different colors in gray and white that are out there are incredible. Like you think to be white, right? But even when I look at my my rack of paints i have ice cream white i have vanilla vintage white i have uh one that's called snowflake i have one called ultra white i have i have a million grays i have a boulder gray sky gray you name it so some of them grays are more blue some of them have a warmer yellow or red tint to them Kind of experiment with the different colors of gray that are out there available because not just gray but white because you f quickly forget like you know there's a lot of variations with what would normally be pretty bland colors especially when you're starting out you don't you know you, you don't think about all the different colors of white and gray that exist I think that might have been our podcast we were talking about with Doug. Hardy, yes. Um, you could buy 15 different things of Hunter Line and have all of the all the varieties. Definitely. All right. We got our corner trim. And once I get this corner trim on, we'll start painting again. I, I promise. And I'm going to show you my beautiful paint palette. It is the ugliest thing you'll ever see in your life. If you guys caught uh, on YouTube earlier, I deleted it since, but I accidentally um, started a live stream from my couch. And it was like me staring at the screen, scratching my beard, like wondering... Uh, if it was working or not, then I realized it was working. So if you guys saw that earlier, they're like, I saw there was like six or eight views on it. Uh, at least you got a, a cheap laugh out of me. All right, just doing our corner trim. And I know we're pat, we're getting up on the hour here, but I'm gonna stay on just to paint the walls tonight, and then um, that'll be a wrap for tonight. 
Um, when my dad comes on next, I'm up for where I left off. So his walls will be painted, right, Dad? Your walls will be painted, braced, everything will be done, right? We're all nodding. We're nodding and we're saying yes. And and actually, you know what? I'm going to open this up to our people that are watching tonight. What's something that you want to see us do on our live builds um, that we haven't done previously in other live builds? Um, you know, we, we, we try to stick to the instructions pretty well. And, and that's just for a reason. We have a lot of people who... Um, you know, it might be their first time they've built a craftsman kit, and we don't want to leave them in the leave them behind. You know, so we try to. Jason's been done for forty five minutes. William Knight said he probably is. He probably finished it when he got it. But, oh yeah, stucco work is gonna be happening, Hardy. But I wanna, I would, I just wanna ask what you guys think we should cover that we haven't covered in our other live builds. And if you're new on our YouTube channel to our live builds. Um, we've done like three or four of them in the past. You can head over to our Facebook page and watch the old recorded lives on there. But um, I want to do on this live build that doesn't really break from the instructions on the kit, but is something that you haven't seen us do in the past. Docks from scratch. Yeah, that's a good one. Stairs and ladders. Stucco will be definitely done on this kit, though. Um, all right, so here's my beautiful paint palette. You love it. I know everyone loves it. I haven't cleaned it in God knows when. So we're going to paint these walls right now. Also, if you guys participated in our group, whatever, or overtime at the bench, listener group page contest i will be posting those photos tonight i uh, had a busy day but i got to get those posted tonight so check back a little bit later for the official posting of the uh, contest build and you'll if you're not part of that you can still go on and vote if you didn't build and if the next time you want to join to our facebook group for listeners it's Overtime at the Bench on Facebook. If you aren't part of that group, you can join now. I don't care when. You can join whenever you want. Um, and join in on some really awesome other modelers. We, we share a lot of stories. We have some fun. We laugh at each other. We get thrown in Facebook jail occasionally because we mention the wrong type of uh, modeling products. But, you know, it is what it is. We got some requests here. Stairs and uh, docks from scratch. Shingles. We will be hitting shingles hard on this one. Gallery glass. I have not used gallery glass, Ron, but I know my dad has a, quite a bit, so he might be able to cover that one. I'm going to quickly stain these other pieces while I paint the... Um, wall sections. Okay. Let those dry. Let it focus again sometime this century. Come on now. All right, there we go. All right, we're focused. We got to get... All right. Time to paint. I'm going to throw some paint on this old crusty palette. And I'm going to do... And... We're going to try this first, though. I'm going to try and ball up a piece of paper towel. This might suck. This might be really... Bear with me, guys. Uh, on our one of our, he mentioned doing um, newsprint, so I'm actually going to try some paper towel for that. I got some paint on my paper towel. It out quite a bit. 
and paint with a paper towel. just blotting it over and over again we'll see what we think here in a minute the awesome thing about this kind of stuff is we like we've talked about on our show before you can't like you can't mess stuff up too bad George we will be doing um, we will be doing Um, some brickwork. I will show you that. Yes, we did just talk about painting with paper towels. I thought it was newspapers. Maybe. I'm liking it. I'm having to. I'm having to learn. It's a little bit different, but I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, actually. It's a way different pattern than a sponge would make it's very cool so let me hold it up close come on you can focus on it come on it doesn't want to focus there we go yeah I'm, I'm digging this texture this texture it's making so I'm just gonna hit this up a couple more times I'm not gonna do all the walls with the paper towel tonight. I am gonna do all the walls with the paper towel though. I'm gonna ditch the sponge on this build and only paint with a paper towel. I'm gonna make sure I hit my corner trim up really well. Same thing on this side. Very cool. I do want to say one thing. Um, we will be auctioning off one of these two kits on um, a charity auction. So, building with us or whatever, you just like to support great things. If you are aware of our podcast, you would have probably already heard this, but my dad and I will both be building the same kit, obviously. And um, one of the two kits will be auctioned off for the Dare Model Railroad Club. Um, and we all the proceeds for that will go to the Dare Model Railroad Club. So that'll be a lot of fun watching that come together and having a little charity auction. So one of our two builds, once it's finished, we'll put it on a little diorama or something and we will actually auction it off in its final state. I'm digging this paper towel effect though. Because it makes it look weathered, and now I don't have to weather too much more of it. Yeah, Jeff Grove. What? I'll give credit to Jeff Grove on this one. I love it. I love the technique. Let me get it off this black background, because I think it's making it harder to see. Because of the contrast of it. But the black background was screwing it up. I love the texture that that made with paper towels way better I actually like it better than a sponge so uh, and you can see here's that board I pulled out earlier all right let's just do one more well the only problem is it's starting to get all crusty nasty and I gotta probably get another new paper towel soon I'm gonna do one more wall because I'm just I'm loving this I'm gonna get my paper The only problem is it's soaking up more paint than I would with a sponge. All right, I'm gonna call this one a wrap after I paint this wall. It'll be on for a little bit over an hour, and I really I have to get and I gotta upload this this contest build later then for our two by two contest. So I'm gonna paint this last wall and then call tonight a wrap. 
My dad will be picking up where I left off with the paint, uh, with painting walls. Hopefully his walls will be painted by then. You don't have to watch him paint the same walls. Um, he'll have it ready. Uh, next Monday, 7.30 or 8, uh, we'll announce when uh, pretty soon. We won't let you guys wait till Sunday night before we announce it. But uh, 7.30 or 8 o'clock, we will be doing the next live build with my dad from his bench on YouTube and Facebook. So if you enjoyed watching the YouTube stream, we will be back on YouTube next week. I will go through the comments for suggestions for things that we should be doing on our live builds, continuing. It's great to have uh, some time with you guys back on a live build. I know it's been quite some time since we had our last live build. And um, um, it was excited that we actually were back and doing live builds with everybody. So that, um, while you guys are at it, in the next week, get your walls braced. Um, my dad will be doing from here forward, from painting forward, probably a little bit of uh, work, maybe some windows. And then the week after that, I will be back on at eight o'clock. So then I'm up, we'll be on at eight o'clock because uh, I, have to, I have to deal with kids in the afternoon. So mine will be a little bit later, but you guys get it. Uh, if you're on our YouTube, yes, Dan Cohen, I will take a picture of a close up of the walls that I painted tonight and post it on our Facebook page for you. Um, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit like, all that stuff, hit our notifications. That way, the next time we go live, you get the uh, notification that we're live. And hopefully we can have a couple more people watching. So that's it, guys. I am going to call tonight a wrap. And uh, that's it.